Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. Today we've got interesting antique dealers on the show. We have James. He buys all kinds of technical antiques. They were mostly used in mining. And Mark, he's a wheeler dealer from Brighton. He gives fantastic prices. I'm not going to mess around. Also, we have Cheryl. She buys pretty quality items. It's a very attractive thing. And then we have a new young member, Chris. He's all things 20th century. I'm a sucker for anything Americano. People are here, they're smiling, they want to walk out of here with the real deal. Right, we're open in witness, ready for business. Yeah, and James okay. Late's keen nice to be put in the picture for his first deal. I really can't wait to find out the history of this portrait. I want to know all about it. And maybe I'll make a good offer. To make sure you do, the Duke and auctioneer Max Blackmore are watching on, and Janet knows what she wants. As near to 200 pounds as a passive can get. Well, I can see it's a portrait, but what do you know about it? Not much, really. No. Not is much it, is it a family heirloom? No, it was a gift. A gift, OK. Yes. So how long have you had it? Um, about 14, 15 months. Um, when I visited my friend, um, it was in the hall, and I absolutely fell in love with it. Yeah. But I lived in a three-bedroom house at the time. Since I've moved to a very modern bungalow, and it just... Doesn't work? No, no. doesn't work at no. all. So what we've got is an oil painting on a um, board. Is it Priory, the wood? I don't know. I think it's oak. Is Let's it? have a look. Yeah, it's oak. oak. It's, a, it's a rough hewn sort of oak. Has it been a panel from somewhere? It's possible that it's a panel out of a piece of furniture, but I'm not convinced about that necessarily. Um, what I'm not 100% convinced about is its age, because obviously this is a portrait of a 17th century man. So he sh we should be looking at something like, I don't know, 1650, 1660. But there's doubt in my mind because it doesn't seem to be brilliantly well painted, especially in his, in his face. It just looks as if it's possibly a copy rather than a good portraitist painting a picture of a, of a man. I think it's probably English, although it could be Northern European. It could possibly be Dutch. Um, because his, his shoes are very flamboyant. And I'm not mm. quite sure whether we had such flamboyant costume in England at that time. Right. It hasn't been got at. It's the sort of condition that picture it's dealers expensive. love to buy things in, because you know there haven't been mucked around. We have a board here which we all feel fairly certain is late 17th century. Now, the question is this. Is this all from the period? Or was this board used at a later time in the 19th century for someone to put this character on it to try and deceive you and make you believe mm. that it was all done in the late 17th century? What does your experience tell you? I think, on balance, this is probably 19th century. Um, I think, to be absolutely certain, you'd probably have to go into the realms of having the paint tested and so on, but the value of the picture wouldn't warrant that, in my opinion. What's your estimate? I went in at 170 to 220. OK, I think we've got really 150 to 200 pounds from our independent valuers, which is telling you that they believe it to be 19th century. Now, James is going to like this. Let's see what he puts on the table. I'd like to offer you 50... One. One fifty. Two hundred. Tempting. Tempting? Yes. Do you think this is the point to get a bit of advice from David? There he is. Right. We have had long conversations with our independent valuers and the auctioneers over your picture. I have two estimations here. Basically, both of them encompass 150 to 220 pounds. When I first saw that, I thought, 17th century board. Now, the question is this, was that painting done contemporary with that board? Or did someone in the 19th century say, nice board, I will paint a picture and perhaps try and kid a few people that this is a late 17th century picture? Now, that's what it's more likely to be. As a 19th century item, that's its money. 
But if there's any more age in that, it could be worth a gamble. If you want to gamble, I'm for it. So that, well, I, I think the more I look at it, the more convinced I am that it's probably not 17th century. But I still think it's a nice decorative picture. So I'm going to put a bit more down to see if I can tempt it away from you. So we've got 200 there. So that's 220. Is that more interesting? 250. 250. Hmm. I think it's something that I'm happy to speculate on. 240 and one of those 250. Happy? Yeah. We've got a deal. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm very pleased to got £50 pound more than I expected. Well done, Janet. Are you as happy, James? I don't think David was very kind about it. I think it's a nice decorative item, and I don't care if it's 19th century. I think it'll clean up very nicely. I like a bit of a gamble. I'd have run with it at the auction. You never know. Never mind. James will tell us later if he sells it. Mark's not wasting any time with these accessories. Two watches in front of me. I love buying a watch, but one of these is better than the other. They come as a package. What are your tactics, Ken? I'm not sure. Try and coax it out of him. Try and use a bit of scouse charm. Calm down, calm down. Now, what's the background? What's the story with these? The story is the Silver Omega was my 21st present off my mum and dad. Right. Uh, so that is now 41 years old. Mm -hmm. um, and the Garrard was my 25-year loyal service presence from Fords in Halewood. Um, this, they sit in a drawer in my bed, bedside cabinet. Um, my two sons aren't interested in them. Uh, and basically, next year is my 25th wedding anniversary. So myself and my wife, Margaret, want to go on a nice holiday. So some cash off them would uh, put, go towards it very nicely. Right, OK. Well, they're, they're very contrasting, these washes, because we have a make by the name of Amiga. Now, Amiga make very good quality watches. They keep very good time, and they're a household name. Now, with this model, we have what we call the Geneve. Now, the Geneve is the style, the model of the watch. What's nice about this particular one, it has the original Amiga strap. Now, a lot of these don't. They have stainless steel straps yes. that are nothing to do with the watch, yes. but this is original. But then we come on to this watch here, which is a Garrard. Mm -hmm. Now, Garrard are, are very well-known jewellers. Mm -hmm. They're not so well known for watches. As a watch, it really doesn't have too much value. Mm -hmm. Sorry to say that because I know it was your 25th gift for part in the company, but the better watch is the Amiga mm -hmm. because it's more saleable to yes. a collector. So for me, this is going to be based a little bit around its gold content. Right, I see. It's a shame, mm -hmm. but it is the real truth. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. I've got, to, I've got to have a look because it, you've got to have an inscription on it being presented Unfortunately, to you. yes. Yeah, yes. it has. So you've got your name there in appreciation of 25 years loyal service from September 1994. So what That's I'm going fine. to do is going to put some money on the table. OK. And um, hopefully we can try and do some business. OK. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 120, 140. 160, 180 pounds. A bit more. Well, I know David loves a watch, and I think we should hear what he's got to say. Fine. Thank you. Well, we've got a watch here, which was already a presentation watch. It's mint, it's boxed, and it's a very smart-looking watch. Of course, you've got an Amiga there, stainless steel. I've got two estimations from our independent values and our auction here. They encompass really 180 to 250. I think that has a good possibility of retailing, especially in Brighton. They'll sell that like that. <laughs> I'd have to take your name off it first, so Ken off the pack. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm prepared to do is put another 20 on the table, 200 pounds. Squeeze such more, my possibly another 10. I'm more than happy to give you that because I like the watches and I do like buying them. So I'm going to put that there. £210, Ken, we got a deal? Yes. Lovely. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. 
very, very happy. I'm certainly going to be selling those to a good client. It's our 25th anniversary next year, so I'd like to take her somewhere nice on holiday. She's a good girl, so she's worth it. What a lucky lady. It's a family affair over on Cheryl Hayton's table with Rosina and Liz. Uh, we bought along some Royal Dalton figurines today, so we're hoping for about £150 and we're going to actually squeeze the deal as best we can. A mother and daughter routine. I'm going to be offering around £100 for the four. Hope our seller won't be too disappointed. You might be in for double trouble. What made you first start collecting Royal Dalton? I think at the time it was just the fashionable thing to have and a lot of them were bought for different presents over the years, you know, by friends and family. Mm -hmm. Have so. you got a favourite among these four? The lady. The lady with the cup of tea? The granny. <laughs> <laughs> these look fairly modern, all around sort of 1980s date-wise. So if we just have a quick look at this one, this is a really popular one. This is a modern Royal Dalton mark here. We've got the name there of the figure, Top of the Hill. She was the one that everybody always used to collect, the ladies, you know, there was a, a huge series of these. As you probably know, made in England, Staffordshire factory. I just think maybe everybody at some point in their it's life has been Royal given Dalton. a Royal Dalton lady yeah. or figure, or I don't think there's a household in Britain that doesn't yeah. probably have one. But everybody's doing well, what you're doing. doing clearing them out. <laughs> They're well, just not the fashion, are they, anymore? The lady with the cup and saucer, she was a limited edition. I've okay. had them all about 40 years, yeah. Mm -hmm. Liz, you don't fancy keeping these, then? No. I've got really bad memories of this one <laughs> as a child. I think it's really <laughs> scary. I think a lot of people are not very keen on Punch and Judy, are no. they? No, it's not nice. Right, let's get some money out and see if we can uh, see if we can buy these. Okay, so twenty, forty, sixty, eighty pounds. Okay, hundred pounds. No. no. I like them for a hundred pounds. I like them for a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to offer you a hundred pounds. No. No. So no. Well, if you're calling them girls, I'm calling them girls <laughs> as well. So it's Rose and Liz, isn't it? Yes. Four pieces of the Dalton, 120, 160, 100, 150. Not the easiest things in the world to sell, a little bit out of fashion. But I think this is something which you might have half a chance with this auction. Nice offer from Cheryl. But I think this is probably worth a gamble. Hopefully, we might get you a bit more money. OK. It's David's advice. That's my bid. Tell me what you'd like to do, girls. Go to auction. Go to auction. You're going to go to auction. Yeah. Great to meet you two. And you. And good luck and on you. the day. Thank you. We're straight over to the sale room. And auctioneer Max Blackmore has a plan. So the four Royal Dalton figures are split into two lots of two. On one lot we have a decent bid and a telephone bid, so I'm confident that one will sell, and I'm also hopeful that the other one will as well. Now, what's going to happen with this money? What are you going to spend it on if we sell the items? Um, go away on a turkey and tin sort of break with okay. the pensioners. OK, so, it, so it's like a Christmas <laughs> holiday? Yes. OK. <laughs> So the first lot is the pair of Dalton figures, Punch and Judy Man, and uh, a rag doll seller. They are reserved at £75. What do you think? I think they're going to do well. Did you hear that? I think they're going to do well. <laughs> I think they are as well. I hope so, anyway. They're coming up now. There we are. Interesting group. I can start this lot at 50. 55, 60, 65, 70, 75. On the reserve. Interest on the net, no? We're in the room and selling £75. OK, the first lot has gone for £75. Not a bad start. Here we go with the next lot. Reserve is £45. Well, I can start at 30 with me at £30. On commission, £35.40. £45.50. You're at 55 It's at 55 Any further bids now? 55 in the room in the second row and selling. No interest on the net. All done and going. 
So, £55, uh, the gavel went down on the second lot. Put together the 75 and the 55, and that comes to 130. Then we have to calculate the commission. I make that £106. Are you satisfied? Yeah, and we've got the experience of coming here as well. You've got the experience, you'll be able to wheel and deal and buy and sell and do all those things. OK, under the gavel, 130. Real deal, going on a Christmas holiday. It's going to be a great time. I can hear those jingle bells ringing already. Well, it was worth the gamble, even though it was only six quid. I made six quid. <laughs> Every penny counts. Back in the den, these six crystal coffee glasses have got Chris Skitch in a mysterious mood. A bit of continental silver. I'll be keeping my cards close to my chest over these. But Simon's got a trick up his sleeve. I'm a good negotiator and I'm going to bleed Chris dry. Watch out. What have you brought in today? Uh, some crystal uh, coffee cups uh, from Florence. My mother-in-law's father-in-law mm. uh, is Italian, he's from Italy, uh, and he, he passed them through uh, as a wedding present when, obviously, his son married. Sometime in the 70s, you said? Yeah, early 70s, they, they came into the family, yeah. OK. And by the looks of it, they are continental. So I do have a little hallmark there. Let's get my wheel out. Have a further look. Yep, and there's the 800 there, which is the European standard yep. for silver. So another thing I've noticed that's nice about these, which my mother would definitely approve of as well, is the fact that you can take the glass out or the crystal out yep. and clean it separately, right? Yeah. Who polished them? Was that you polishing them over the years? No, mother-in-law's polished them. You've done a good job. They've been in the garage for eight years. Did you, did you polish them especially? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. So we get a bit more money off you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I do think they're rather nice. Would, would I use them? Possibly. I'm sure you Got would. a nice sort of lilac -y colour there. Go with the colour of your eyes, I think. Well, I like that. <laughs> so what's nice about this set is that all six are there, and I'm sure I'll be able to move them on quite quickly. Are you going to drive a hard bargain on this one, then? I am, yes. Flash the cash, show me the money. <laughs> I think I'm going to go 20, 40, 50 quid for now. How many, how many are you looking to buy? I thought you wanted to, to get the set. Well, it's up to you. I don't want to split them. It's up to you. Did you want to take them to auction? Can we not squeeze you for a little bit more? I'll tell you what, I mean, I'll put an extra five pounds down. I think we're going to have to leave that there, to be honest. I'll tell you what, that green one, uh, swap that for an orange. Surely. I think that's fair enough. Swap that there. 60 quid, that is where I want to be at. Have we got a deal? Go on. Goodbye, yeah. deal. Thank you. 60 quid, just what I came for. Get in. What a real deal. Am I going to make a profit? Highly doubt it. All dealers say that, even the young uns. Hi, Mary and Mark. Mary's sitting nice down with you. Mark and she's brought in a secret weapon. I've brought along a silver compact. I would like about £50 and the money's going to Lily Mae for her to buy some toys and stuff. Well, I'm going to offer the price of silver for the compact. Will it be enough? Mm, I'm not sure. Wait till Lily Mae charms you, Mark. How did you come by it? My mum. My mum gave it to me for my 30th. OK, right. And do you use it? No. So I'd rather give it to somebody who appreciated it than me sat in the cupboard doing nothing. Right, OK. Compacts come in all different metals. Yeah. Silver, gold, copper, brass. You know, they are very popular to the right people, the collectors. Most of the gold ones have been scrapped up because they're very heavy and they outweigh themselves. So this is a nice silver engine turned compact and if we open it here we can say yeah, it's made in Birmingham because we've got the anchor mark which tells me it's that's where it's been assayed and it is made in 1947 we've got the original glass and the uh, bottom part here that the powder would be housed in I can't see the, uh, the no. little thing you put the powder I didn't on. have it you didn't have it no. oh I've kept the rest you kept the rest but not that okay we've got a nice little fun piece here which has been gilded over it's not gold, not Hallmark, but it's what we call silver gilt. If you were to sell it, what are you actually going to do with the money? Give it to Lily May. Your granddaughter? Yes. Right, OK, that's a good idea. Couldn't really give her that, could you? No. No, I think it might break quite quickly. Yes. <laughs> right, OK. Um, 
Oh dear. It's really hard for me because I'm looking at this piece and for me, I think I know what it's worth in my area. Yes. And I'm not sure if you will reckon it a bit more money because of what it is. So please don't be offended, but I'm going to put some money down and we'll okay. see how we go. No problem. 10, 20, 30 pounds. I'd like a little bit more, please. Do you know, I've gone straight in what I want to pay for it. I'm not going to mess around. The compact is worth 35 pounds. But I know a man who will look at it and give you his expert opinion. I know a man who might want to just powder his nose a little bit. Because <laughs> a very sweet, nice little object. In silver alone, there's probably nearly 30 quid's worth. If we sell it to this man over here, these people are heartless. He'll put it in the melting pot. We can't put it in the melting pot. We must go to auction and find a collector. What can I say? Not a lot. It's the truth. I would melt it because I haven't got a collector for it. But there's £30 on the table. What would you like to do? Go to the auction, please. Yeah, I thought that'd be the case. I wish you the best of luck. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Before we head over to the sale room, what does auctioneer Max reckon? 1930s compact, engine turned, always popular. Pretty certain we'll get to £40 on it. Well, Mark is a great buyer of jewellery and decorative items. I was a little bit surprised he only offered 30 quid. Mary said, I can't accept that. She can't make it here today. Now, I'm looking after her interests, so I'm going to do the best that I can. And she has set a reserve of 40 pounds. It's coming up now. Let's see what happens. Uh, there it is on your screens as you see it there. So I'm at 30 pounds then, 30 pounds. 30 bid at 30 pounds and five, 40, 40 pounds. We're at 40, we're on the reserve. We're now in the room at 40 pounds. Any further bids? At 40 pounds in the second row then? It's worth a little bit more than this really. The quality is very good. No further interest on the net. All done and selling. OK, 40 pounds. We have some commission to deduct from the 40 pounds. And that still leaves 32 pounds, two more pounds than she was offered. I shall send the £32 off to Mary, and I'm so she'll be pleased. An extra two quid is a lot of money for a little baby. Chris? Looks like Christopher's hit the jackpot bringing his pinball machine to Chris. I'm absolutely ecstatic about this item. I'm a sucker for anything Americana. I'm taking this home with me no matter what, it's mine. I'm not going to sell. Um, the dealer that I paid a fiver for it, and I'm hoping that I can walk away with around about £250 or thereabouts. Cheeky, like your style. Where on earth did you get it? I found this um, in the bottom of a cellar in uh, the place where I live in Runcorn. Um, I found it, I've taken it to a few places to try and get a valuation, but as of yet, no one seems to be able to put a value on it because they haven't come across one. Well, you've come to the right person. I'm a sucker for anything Americana. OK, that's I, good. I, I like live that. and breathe American stuff. I deal in it on a daily basis. Right, see how? Um, so it's obviously the leftovers of a pinball machine. We've got the D Gottlieb & Co, Chicago. So we've got a proper American pinball machine. Yep. The Globe Trotter, which is what it's called. We've got Statue of Liberty in the middle. We've got Hawaii, it looks like China. We've got, you've got London there. Paris, so there's obviously some sort of travel theme going on. We've got a label down there which someone's added and invented by Nathaniel Froggett in 1912. I'm not sure what that's referring to because the quick research I did on this pulled up 1951 as the date this was designed. But you got any ideas what the 1912 might be? I've got exactly the same as what you've got. It's made in, the actual pinball was made in 1951, but Nathaniel Froggett, I'm thinking or I'm guessing it could be painted. I'm not entirely sure. You found it in the skip, right, or with the basement. Yep. So I'm guessing your cost is only your hard labour getting it out of the basement? No, I, um, I actually paid the landlord uh, a sum of money for it, yeah. A considerable um, sum of money? It was OK. It was OK? It was OK. Well, we shall see. Yes. Um, the frame looks a bit shabby. 
But then again, I love it. As I think, I totally see it as a piece of art. Yeah. But don't expect mega, mega money coming out, to come out of my wallet. But I do want to own this. I do want to take this home. Oh, well, I'd like to hear that. I'm glad when someone wants to uh, take it home and appreciate it. OK, well, let's see how much I'm willing to pay. Um, as a project for me, it's going to start off as a 40, 50 quid project. No, no chance. Absolutely not. No, not at all. No, it's got to be a lot more. OK, so let's make that two. It's a lovely piece of art. I totally... I, I, that's true. But then again, it's a broken pinball machine. In theory, there must be thousands of those floating around. Not like this. Well, OK, that's up for debate. Let's go... I'll go... 70. How does that, how does that sound? No, nowhere near, I'm afraid. You've got to do a lot better than that. I've done a little bit of research myself and I've got a figure in mind. And it's nowhere near that. OK, I'm going to push that to... A hundred pounds, and to be honest with you, as a project, that's a big investment for something that needs this amount of work. No, that, that, it's, it's not enough of what it is. As a project, it's nice as it is, you wouldn't have to do anything to that. Can I ask you how much you paid for it? I paid five pounds, um, but it's been valued anywhere between two and five hundred. Listen, and I don't want to budge this. I like this item, I'll revise my offer to 150, that's a, and that's a big leap. I can see that you like it, and I see that you want it. If you put, let's say, another 25 pound, we can do a deal. I'm willing to put another tenner on, mate, and I'll shake your hand. 15, we've got a deal. 165 pounds? Yes. Right, so I'm gonna put it down. 165 quid. My hand's out. Okay, uh, I think you've got a deal. Good Thank you Thanks very much. Lot. Thank you. Christopher didn't get as much as he'd hoped, but he can't be disappointed with a £160 profit. I know I took less than I wanted, um, but I'm glad Chris has bought it because he really, really wanted it and he's going to enjoy it. I don't care if I don't make a profit on this. I'm happy to keep it. Where am I going to find another one? That's no way to make a living. Roy's preparing to do battle with James over his World War II medals. James, uh, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of times on TV, but he has a zip on his pocket and a lock on it, so I'm not expecting much today off him. The deal's not even started yet. Second World War victory medals, they're in nice condition. Let's see how much money I'm going to put down for them. You don't look quite old enough to have won these yourself. No, they're not my quite. father's. They're my father's. Your father's, OK. Yeah. And why are you selling your dad's medals? Well, I've only got one son, and he's not interested. He's not interested? No. I'm amazed. I always try to persuade people not to sell their medals. Yeah. Because I think it's really important that future generations have, you know, these, this connection. OK, so your dad was Christopher Radley. Yeah. Yep. This is his service record. That's right. His date of birth and when he joined and his eye colour and everything. Yeah. Height. And these are all his captain's signatures yeah. of when he changed ship, is that right? Yeah. So you kept this in lovely condition. Yeah. And the medals themselves obviously haven't been played with very much. Oh, no, no. So I, have, I have worn them with my own medals a couple of times. Is that allowed? Uh, oh, yeah. They would have to be on my right-hand side and my own medals on the left-hand oh, side. All right, OK. So if I buy them, can I wear them? Oh, of course, yeah, on oh, the right-hand right. side. Thank you very much. Well, these are Naval General Service medals. Mm -hmm. So this is 1939 to 1945. So everyone was issued with these in 1945. Oh, yeah. And this one is the defence medal, isn't it? Yeah. And two victory stars. Yeah, North Atlantic star and um, the Southern Atlantic Southern star. Southern Atlantic star, OK. I mean, they're not silver, these, are they? They're, 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 they're silver. Are they? They're silver, Are sure yeah. they're not oh, keeper yeah. and nickel? I don't think so. I think they're, they're silver. Well, that's very nice if they are. Yeah. And these are bronze. Yeah. So there they are. We'll put some money on the table now. Yeah, OK, James. I'm going to put down 20 and one of those. 30 pounds. Oh, wrong colour, James. Those two alone are worth twice as much as that. Is that right? Yeah. I'm not so sure. Another 10, so that's 40 pounds. Oh. So do you think you need David's advice at this point? Oh, definitely. Here he comes. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is, Roy, what are you doing selling Dad's medals? Well, I'm getting too old now myself. I've only got a son. The son's not interested. I know. 
Well, um, so many times we've heard the same thing. It's a sad statement, really, because men went out and sacrificed themselves in many cases and did their service and did their duty for the country. Fairly standard issue, no names around the medals, but we know who they belong to by this document. 70 to 100 pounds. I think they'll bring within that region. I wouldn't personally take 40. I think it's worth a gamble. I'm hoping we're going to get up to 70 or 80 quid, something like that. So I'm going to say thank you, sir, for your very generous offer. Thank you, sir. But I think we will march off down to the auction. Left, right, <laughs> left, right, left, right. I'll, I'll try one more then, Roy. I'll put another tenner down, so that's 50 quid. Oh, it's not even worth considering. And I'd, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to buy a plaque, you see, from my father's headstone. So I would look at at least 100. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go to auction. All right. Well, look, thank you very much for bringing them, and I hope you get the right amount of money at auction. Cheers, James. Well, uh, yeah, I think that James is a tight as a butcher's sausage. Tight as a butcher's sausage? That's not very nice. Let's see how well he does at auction. So they're here in the sale room now. The reserve is set at £70. Now, I read here in my notes that if they sell, uh, you're looking to putting the money towards a plaque for your father's headstone. Yeah. So I think that's a very, very worthwhile thing to do. They're coming up now. Let's see what happens. Here we go. 339A, uh, which is the World War Service Medals. I can start at 55, 55, 60, 65, 70. On the reserve. 70 pounds in the room. Interest on the net, no. 70 pounds in the middle. All done and going at 70 pounds. OK, gone down at 70 pounds. Take away the commission and we've got £57. Pounds. Now, the money is going to go towards a plaque for your father's headstone, so it's going to go to a really good cause, and uh, and that's good. So, £70 pounds was about their money, but the commission knocked it down to £57. Pounds. That was the real deal. Well done, Roy. Oh la la, Brian's brought in a beautiful French timepiece for Cheryl. And he wants a pretty penny. I hope to get between five and six hundred pounds for this. This clock garniture's coming up next. Something that I would have given several hundred pounds for a few years ago. A bit out of fashion now. 250, 350 maximum. That offer won't be on vogue either. So how did you come to own this? Well, actually, I bought it off, off of a chap who bought it for, um, for my, um, an antique fair. Because uh, I like clocks. I do I mess around with clocks and I fit them and I take them apart and that. All right, OK. And I know a good thing when I see it. I think it's, I think it, it's marble. It's French. Mm -hmm. It's got the two garnishes in it. It's got... A garniture. We'll call yeah, it a clock a garniture, garniture yeah. in the tray. I made a sniffers, put it on. That's right. Sometimes these are missing, so... Yeah. These were... You had the candles here, That's obviously, right. when we didn't have electricity. Yeah. But then you've got the little snuffer there to put, yeah. put those out. So... And um, it's hand-painted. That's, all That's hand, right. That's all hand-painted. The little garlands of flowers. And so, have you had a play around with this? Is this in working order, it's Brian? It's excellent working order. And it makes that really nice little ding, ding, ding. Yeah, ding. yeah. and the movement's great. It's very clean, the movement. It's okay. really nice, and I, I love it. The, the reason why I'm selling it, it's my 50th anniversary next year, my wife's 50th anniversary. Wow. It's also my wife's birthday, and I need to get as much as I can to take, to take her on there. To, Cruise. And on he's a going cruise. cruise, yeah. Wow. He's going cruise, yeah. A special time. Yes, then. it is, yeah. She, so. she deserves it. Yeah, my wife deserves it. Well, that's it. nice. I've had many of these over the years. My father and I had an amazing Italian customer, and right, at one yeah. point the Italians were buying these. We just could not get enough of them. Not quite so sure how wanted they are in the market at the moment. It's in lovely condition. There's no chips, there's no, no cracking here on the base. Um, it's a very attractive thing. Date-wise, we're looking at probably turn of the century. Yeah, I reckon. Late, it's French, late. as you said, mm -hmm. hand-painted numerals and swags around the face here. And this lovely filigree hands. 
and we've got here Brive. So this is the yeah. town in France yeah. where it was made, the right. area sort of. Yes. Years ago you had areas that were famous for different right. things, so this is the area. So and it's got the bow and arrow on there, it's like Cupid, that's you right. see yeah. yeah, and that's quite, quite a common design. You see this quite a lot. Sometimes you'll see a cherubs on them, yeah. animals on them an array of all sorts of right. different things. Okay, yeah. But I suppose the most important thing, Brian, is the cash. This is it. We're so going to get the cash yeah. out then and see what you think. The, your trip. Okay, right, off we go, Brian, see if we can get you on that cruise. So 50, 100, 150. No way. No, it's worth a lot more than that. Okay. Just take the, take the cobwebs off the money. <laughs> <laughs> 200? No. No? Right. 250? No. No? 300? You're getting there. I'm getting there. You're getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. There's 300 there. I'm going to squeeze a bit more. 340. What do you think to that? I, th I, I think, I, I believe it's worth a lot more. A lot more. Of the OK, now the estimate on this was 200 to 350. Now that probably doesn't sound a lot of money to you, and I know it doesn't, but let me tell you why. This clock is anywhere between 1930s to 50s. It's a reproduction style of a Louis XVI clock. It's in very good order. I think it's not marble, I think it's alabaster. Um, there was a lot of this merchandise on uh, uh, the market years ago. You were getting 450, 500, 600, 700. Mm -hmm. Those days have gone. I'm going to say what's on the table is not a great bid, but it's a good bid in today's market. Now, I understand where you're coming from. It looks beautiful, and to an unspecialist eye, surely it's worth more than that. Well, not in my opinion. The master spoken, Brian, master you see. You were looking at me thinking I was mean and I wasn't really. You're not mean. That's my bid, but the choice is yours. What would you like to do? I'd take the money. You're going to take the I'd money. money. Wise choice. Deal. Thank you for Thank bringing you. it along. Thank Enjoy you. your cruise. Thank you. Yeah, when David came in and told me it was a later one and it's not as desirable like it used to be, I was a bit disappointed. But as again, it was a real deal. That would go a long way towards our trip. Bon voyage. I think there's going to be a really tiny profit in this item. Make that no profit as she's still holding on to it. How did the rest of the dealers do? It wasn't a bumper payday. Chris forked out for the pinball machine. I'm happy to keep it. Where am I going to find another one? He's kept it for himself and turned it into a coffee table. Clever boy. How did the silver cups do? I'm a good negotiator and I'm going to bleed Chris dry. And that's exactly what he did. Two quid for a day's work, Chris. We've got a deal. James took a chance on what turned out to be a 19th century oil painting. I think it's a nice decorative item. I think it'll clean up very nicely. It did. And so did James. There was no gamble for Mark and the two watches. I'm certainly going to be selling those to a good client. And he did. But together, our dealers only made £122. It was make or break for the three sellers who chose to go to auction. They all made more than the dealers offered. Just. Well, it was worth the gamble, even though it was only six quid. I made six quid. <laughs> And in the den, they walked away with £1,025 in cold, hard cash. That's how you do it. Get in. It's a real deal. Our sellers were really canny today, as expected. They got the jackpot. They got the money out of those deals. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you. Don't be late.